Hello and welcome to Brand X Reviews. Very quick video here. I was just kind of sat in this room, uh, just chatting online with a few people because Facebook is down tonight. And I got asked a question about how, uh, in Captain Marvel, how come the Tesseract is in the film? How did it end up where it ended up? Because it gets a little bit confusing. Um, now, basically, if you can remember back in Captain America, the first Avenger, the film, the first of the Captain of it, uh, Captain America films. The Tesseract was in that film and that was set during the Second World War, so in the 1940s. And at the end of the film, Red Skull picks up the Tesseract and he then gets kind of taken away to another realm, later to be seen in Avengers Infinity War, but that's a separate issue. Uh, the Tesseract then falls out of his hand when he vanishes and it just kind of melts through its way through the hull of the aircraft and falls into the uh, the ocean basically and then after that right at the end of the film you see a probe going underwater that's been sent by Howard Stark shortly after uh, they were doing a search for Captain America because obviously the aircraft crashes and he's not seen again for 70 years they find the Tesseract in this probe and they bring it to the surface and they say, well, there's no sign of Steve Rogers. And Howard Stark says, well, you know, we need to keep looking. Obviously, they didn't find him. Uh, well, they didn't anyway. So uh, the Tesseract was recovered at that point by Howard Stark. So between that point and 1995, when Captain Marvel is set, the Tesseract ended up with Marvel in that um, cloaked spacecraft that's kind of hovering above Earth. So um, the question is, how did it get there? I mean, technically, they haven't connected the dots specifically, but it's not a stretch of the imagination. Howard Stark will have been looking after this thing, uh, the Tesseract, for quite a long time. He died around about 1989, which is around about the time when everything kicked off with Captain Marvel and the energy source that she obviously was given her powers from. That was in 1989 as well. So at some point around about then, basically, that was when the Tesseract was put on board that uh, that spacecraft and ended up there until they recovered it in 95 during the events of Captain Marvel. Um, now, obviously, if you can remember, in the, um, in the film Captain Marvel, there's a bit where they go into a facility which is in like a bunker built inside of a mountain. Um, that's where the, from memory, is that where they, where they found the cat as well, I seem to remember? Um, that building is the city. It's a NASA facility. It's a joint NASA slash US military um, facility. That is a NASA facility in the original uh, 2012 Avengers movie, right at the beginning of the film where Loki turns up and they're doing a lot of experiments using a Tesseract with Dr. Selvig. That's the same building, the same facility, from what I understand anyway. Um, so... Between here and there, the, the Tesseract obviously ended up around around that area. Because if you remember the end of Thor, um, we see... Well, the, the original Thor film from 2011, we saw Samuel Jackson with the Tesseract in a suitcase. And presumably that was supposed to be in that facility as well. So basically, it spent its time being used by that group of people in, in that facility. And Howard Stark presumably would have had some dealings there as well. This isn't in any way like spelt out to you as such, but it's not a stretch of the imagination to connect those dots, really. And obviously after that, we know what happened to the Tesseract. It, was, it continued to be worked on uh, after Nick Fury got it back in 95, obviously after the cat puked it up on his desk. Uh, ever since then, it was... Um, being used and experimented on and so on and so forth. So I'll pretty much leave you there. Um, bonus thought when it comes to Captain Marvel. Something that occurred to me, um, you might remember in the film, and this is completely unrelated by the way, but you might remember in the film there's a bit where she has a, not a dream, but she's taken into a kind of psychic place basically and Marvel shows her... Um, well, there's a record player and the 1991 Nirvana album Nevermind is playing uh, on a record player, which, by the way, that didn't get released on vinyl till 96, from what I understand, this film is set in 95. That's not the biggest problem with that. But apparently they were playing that that song that, well, that song that was on the album for her because that was one of her songs that she used to like. I don't know how, because she was missing between 1989 
and 1995. That's, I mean, she missed that whole era with Nirvana. I mean, you could say, like, Bleach came out in 89, I think, around about the time when she went away. But she missed that entire era of grunge um, when Nirvana were on top, basically. Uh, that would be like a kind of a truncated version, well, yeah, truncated version of having Captain America who vanished in the 1940s, coming back in the year 2011, and having nostalgia about the Beatles, and, oh, yeah, I used to listen to this before I went away, you know. that Yeah, <laughs> that's the exact era that he's missed, basically. Granted, that's a larger time scale, but the more you think about the, the music in, in the film, and I mentioned this in my review, the more problematic it becomes, because the song's by um, No Doubt, I think it was just a girl. I do think that came out in ninety five. I think I seem to remember no doubt. Well, uh, quite a bit later than that, but uh, never mind anyway. Uh, no pun intended there. Um, it's all uh, it's all good. It was, it was a pretty decent film. It wasn't the best film, but uh, it wasn't as bad as some of the haters have been making out. So uh, I'll leave there anyway. Like I say, I was asked this question, so I thought I'd give it an answer there. So uh, for now, I'll say um, thank you very much for watching.